Hello friends, Kudo here and welcome back to the channel. So let's finally talk about Illusion Connect and whether or not this game is worth playing. Now, I've been playing the game for probably about four hours now uh, throughout the entire launch day and I kind of want to ask you guys how your experience has gone so far. Now, I do know there's been some issues with uh, like server stability as well as like being able to purchase through the shop and stuff like that, but it does look like the developers are listening to us, they understand the frustrations, and they've actually given out 10 free summoning tickets. So make sure to jump into the game and go claim those summoning tickets because we're probably gonna be able to do at least 30 summons in this video and I've already done like 30 summons in my rerolls. Now, I do want to kind of go through, before we jump into the gameplay and stuff, I do want to let you guys know like the overall account setup I have going for me. Now, I do know that a lot of people were going for very specific characters that are really, really powerful, but I ended up deciding to stick with this specific reroll that I went for with Thanabeth and Frontiva because honestly, I really like them. I just think they're really fun characters to play and I think they have really cool abilities. So I decided to stick with these characters because I think they're doing good enough Anyway, so we'll jump in and talk about those guys in a little bit, uh, but let's go and jump into the actual gameplay and show you guys some of like how the mechanics and stuff work and give you guys my overall thoughts on how it works. Now, I would have to say like the only kind of negative thing that I've had with the game so far would be that my stamina didn't regen as fast as I wanted to, and I found myself running out of stamina really fast. Now, you can go and you can get instant free refills on it if you are not really free, you have to use your gems to do it. And the first couple purchases were fairly cheap, but it gets kind of expensive after that and I didn't want to waste my premium gems doing that. And so even though I played the game for like 3-4 hours straight, I wanted to continue to play the game, but I couldn't because my stamina wasn't refilled. So uh, let's go ahead and turn off auto combat and normal combat. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys that are jumping in playing it right now, the overall combat in this game is different than a lot of other games in the fact that it's sort of a real-time strategy game where everything is still actively going even like when I'm trying to summon a character like this and you need to determine where you're going to summon your character. So I'm going to go ahead and drop her down in the back. Actually, I really shouldn't have summoned her first because she's not going to do what I what I initially want. Uh, there's a lot of different classes in this game that you can see. There's the light and spell, attack, sorcerer, guardian, heal, and summon characters. Let's go ahead and drop a guardian character in the front. I love this character. She's a very easy character to get. She's not very rare but she is invincible for the first 15 seconds of gameplay and this character just basically wasted a whole bunch of damage on her. So let's go ahead and drop a couple of more. I like this one because she can summon characters on the sides. Um, let's go ahead and use some of my captain abilities. Do I have any of my healers up? I do. Go ahead and drop that down. Arrow of Hope, she's going to heal my captain and then heal the rest of my team. So. That's kind of like the setup I've got going on right now. Now, a lot of things that you're going to be doing in this game, it's going to be pretty easy. You can just turn on auto gameplay, auto combat, and get through a lot of the stages fairly quickly. I do feel like you're going to get to the point in the game where um, it's going to get difficult, and you're going to want to pay attention to how you're summoning your characters um, in order to, to defeat certain bosses. Like, there was a certain stage I couldn't progress past, and I could have gone through and grinded and did some raids and stuff like that to get materials. But it would have wasted a lot of energy and a lot of time to do that to kind of raise my characters up. But if I actually went back through and paid attention to how I summon my units, when to summon them, which ones do damage at certain points, stuff like that, I could have easily gotten past it, no problem. So here's the overall combat. All of your characters, when you summon them, activate like their unique skill, their kind of ultimate ability, you could say. And then they have an energy bar that when it fills up, they're able to activate those skills again. Then they have their basic attacks. And then they have these sort of random chance abilities where there's like a 15% chance where their like normal attack will be like improved. At least most characters are like that. So there we go, victory right there. And we should have unlocked the ability to now equip gear onto our characters, which is something that I've been looking forward to basically all day. So one thing I do want to point out is when you're playing through the game, a lot of the progression systems for your characters aren't going to unlock until you hit certain points. For example, when you first jump in, you're only going to have this character tab appear. When you start progressing farther into it, then you unlock the lens tab. And now that we've gotten to the point where I can now go and equip um, actual equipment items and stuff. I'm going to fast unequip because I don't want her having those. I'm going to give them to Fantiva here. It's something I've been waiting for basically all day. Fast equip. And there we go. Level 1. Level Sakagari. Saku, Sakuragari? I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I did want to show you guys that we can go ahead and fast enhance these all the way up to level 10 And there we go. There's further enhancements There's login rewards to get more of those equipment But it's a way to kind of go through and customize your character's abilities now I do want to go through and actually talk about characters abilities specifically. Let's talk about Frantiva 
Now, like I said, I did want to go through and get some of like, the rare characters or some of like, the OPS plus tier characters, but I love the abilities of the ones I currently have right now. Now, my favorite thing about her combat passive ability is when Frantiva dies, three shadows are summoned, shadows receive 120% of her attack, 50% of her defense, and 50% of her HP. So, she's a great character. She kind of like, if she dies, there's a bonus on top of that. I actually have a few characters that kind of do things like that. Another character that I really like as well is Anne. I think Anne is a really fun, just a basic SR character that you can get. She's not that rare. You can get, like, I've gotten her in most of the summons I've done, but I love her combat passive. When the Snow Queen is uh, present, which, like, she has, like, a unique ability where she can summon um, a Mermaid Princess and an Ice Queen. So, when the... Ice Queen is present, damage rate of all allies is increased by 16%. When the Mermaid Princess is present, damage resistance uh, rate of all allies is increased by 16%. So she benefits like everybody. It also gives you two extra units on the battlefield to defend yourself against enemies and give that kind of increased bonus and stuff. So yeah, I just, I love the character designs. I think they look beautiful and I'm like digging it. So yeah, I think they look really great. If you're a waifu person, if you want to get waifus. This game has a lot of really great waifus. There are husbandos in this game too. I don't think I have a single one, even though I know when I was initially playing it or like doing my rerolls, I was getting a whole bunch of them. But yeah, I'm loving the characters. I'm loving the gameplay so far. I'm, I am glad that they have like auto gameplay, so I don't have to pay too much attention to it, but I am glad there is a lot of strategy and depth to the gameplay that when things get difficult, you can jump in and uh, take control and make sure you get past certain levels. Now there are a couple of things I do want to kind of point out and talk about too, is there's this little news tab up here at the top, which I think is really interesting because basically it's kind of categorizing all of the players in the game right now. And as the game, as the players are progressing in the game, any player, the ones that are like in the lead are actually giving rewards to the other players too. So I've gotten up to about 4,000 gems by playing just a couple of hours. And that's even after I did all of my rerolls and used all of my gems. Uh, to do that. Now I will show you guys a couple of places where you can go and collect um, more gems and stuff, which is another thing that I really do like as well, is in the album section of the game, where you can kind of go and take a look at some of the characters, you can go and take a look at their full art, and I'm a sucker, if you have beautiful art in a game, please let us hide the UI, let us see the full art and not have to worry about it, okay? Thank you, I'm glad that that's in the game. It's a huge, it's a huge plus for me. So another thing is once you get the album unlocked, you can go and you can inspect the characters and it will actually give you a lot of gems. I believe like SR characters give you hundred free gems. Um, rare characters give you 60 and then SSRs give you 150. So when you go and you do summons, if you summon a lot of brand new characters, make sure to go and collect those gems because you might be able to do another summon after that. Now there is a lot of other stuff I can kind of talk about with this game. You've got your daily trials. This is where you're going to kind of go through and complete things to get gold and experience potions. You also have your home. I'm not going to even try to pronounce it, the, whatever it's called, where you get passive experience potions, passive gold, and you can kind of go through and customize it. Now I can see this being something that people really like. We kind of go through and design the overall layout of your, uh, you know, your house, get decorations like Halloween decorations and stuff. And then you have like your basic like setup. And I do kind of like how they're doing it right now because it's it's pretty simple. As long as you've got all these things set up, these five like different things, the di five different furnitures set up and leveled up, you basically have your account like good to go. And then you can kind of go through, you can put um, which of the characters are idling in your warehouse and they'll actually give you a couple of different like bonuses. And so for example here, I have a couple of rares that are giving my, uh, my leader a plus 4% uh, health. And then I've got some partner HP uh, boost, deployed energy, gold output, and then experience output. So the XP output it will probably be one of the more important ones for me at least. I'm going to try to drop a couple of more characters when we do some summons to try to increase it. There are characters that give you extra bonuses if they're in like the correct rooms. But yeah, there you go. So there's the housing system. I feel like a lot of waifu games have this housing system. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in and do some summons to end this video. And do I think this game is worth playing? The fact that I wanted to keep playing after I ran out of stamina? Yeah, the answer is yes. I, I think this is a really great game. So we already have Fenabith on here. I don't have Ashwaya, and I do want Ashwaya because I think she looks really good, but I don't have Miyuki or Kur Kur Kuraya. I can't even say it. Miyuki is like the one to go for. In my video, I talked about like, if you're going to summon on any of these banners, 
the Noble Knight Banner is the one you're going to want to summon on. So let's just do a basic one-time summon. Skip it, Shanti. All right, and then let's go ahead and do our 10 times summon. Thank you for the developers for giving us that for free. And see if we can get our third SSR. We got Chio. Okay. Penny. Alice. Penny again. Alice again. Loro. Mary. Loro. Loro. Alice. Not the best summon. I mean, we got one brand new character. We get a couple of free gems from that. And then let's go ahead and we're going to do 20 more summons. And hopefully, I, I, I just want to get one more SSR to kind of complete my team. But they do have like a balancing act when you're going through and you're setting up your lineup. Depending on how powerful units are, they will um, prevent you from like just stacking your whole team. So I do like that. So, Mia... S Whoa! SSR Baroness. Dude, he looks dope. Dang. Okay. My first husbando on my account is an SSR. Mia. Natalie. SRN. Okay, I'm actually thankful that we got that because I really like her and I can continue to progress and push her. Uh, Sachiko. So that's another SSR or an SR character. Re Ray? Rhea? Rhea? I'm going to go with Rhea. Or Rai? I don't know. There we go. We got an SSR and then we got one brand new uh, SR character. Let's do it one more time. Cross your fingers that we get Miyuki. If we get Miyuki, we're basically like set up for life. So here we go. Come on, come on. Epic. SR. Gold. Yes. Okay, so we got an SSR. And I'm really nervous. Please, please let it be Miyuki. Okay, we got a healer. In fact, the healer I have on my team right now, I don't think is that good. So maybe Diana will be better. Arto. Carol, Shanti, Bantan Maru. He was the guy I kept getting like a ton when I was re-rolling. Jasmine, so that's the healer I have right now. I feel like she's, she's okay. Maybe I need to power up a little bit more. Or maybe use her, you know, back her a little bit. But I don't know. But... We got ourselves an SSR um, healer character. I'm actually going to go and take a look at our new SSR character. So Baroness, who looks super dope. Uh, Demon God combat passive. When Baroness dies, he returns to the hand, receives 120% attack, and 88 HP max triggers one time to the bat. So he has a, a resurrection. His unique ability unleashes the Lord of Terror from the Abyss, attacks enemies in a cross pattern, and deals attack 240% damage for each enemy hit, increases attack by 5% and defense by 15%. So he's got a little bit of extra defense um, from there. Uh, smashes enemies with the touch of an ancient deity, attacks an enemy column, dealing attack 120% damage, chance to use his skill is 15%, and then soul pierce. Uh, Baroness pierces the uh, opponent with his weapon, attacks a single enemy, and deals attack uh, times 105. So. Definitely going to add this guy to my team, check him out and see if he's good. And then Diana, I'm hoping she's got some pretty dang good healer ability. So when Diana appears, ally leader restores 33% HP. That's great. So I don't have to have like a unique ability that does that. Uh, raises the flag of oath and floods the battlefield with holy light. Diana attacks a single enemy and deals 285% damage, restoring all HP to ally partner, to the ally partner with the lowest HP, but re Reducing the partner recovery rate by 70%. So she heals like a lot, but it looks like uh, it kind of reduces the recovery afterwards. So the, any healing coming after that might not be the best. So, uh, and then the divine punishment purifies the corruption to save shattered lives, attacks a single enemy, 168% uh, damage is a basic attack. And then Diana waves her flag, attacks a single enemy and deals attack 105%. So she seems like a character that you can use specifically to kind of make sure that your leader is safe and doesn't end up dying. So maybe like kind of like a last resort, drop her down, heal up, heal her, your characters and stuff. I can see that. So you guys go Illusion Connect. I'm digging it. And if you guys want to see more videos of it, let me know down below in the comments. Let me know if you guys have been enjoying it, if it's been fun, what are things that you like, don't like. And again, if you guys enjoy this video, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Safe. Uh, so friends, thanks so much for watching. My name's Coolio and I'll see you next time.